Hi guys. So this is me completely being a queen of pentacles or um, what is it? The empress. <laughs> um, so I have aloe vera babies here. You can see them right there. Um, that I really want to move like so I want to move my little one into this pot and then this big one into this big pot and this way my little one doesn't start dying because she's already she I already designated her as a she um she has some new ones growing in and one of them's already yellow and the other one is black at the bottom over there so I'm like yeah I think I need to move her into something bigger she literally I bought her at the market at the grocery store so I'm <laughs> I'm doing this in the house because I don't want to be in the garage. It's fucking hot in there. And then I don't want to be outside because it's even hotter out there. So I brought everything in the house and my husband will probably kill me if he sees this video because he'll be like, you're gonna get dirt everywhere. But I'm being clean. I'm being careful. Um, I'm doing it slow because I'm scared. <laughs> I don't want to see a worm. I don't want to see a bug. I'll probably scream. <laughs> so I figured if I'm like doing a video, and maybe that'll like kind of help me not be afraid because I don't do animals like little like insect animals um, I don't do outdoors I don't do plants which is really weird because I become super into my plants um, so I just think that that's kind of funny that this has become like something that I enjoy doing and I don't know what the fuck I'm doing so yeah, we're just gonna do what we think needs to be done. My husband helped me plant this one, and it was literally like probably the size of the baby. So it grew in the few months that um, that I've been taking care of it. I don't know how much I'm supposed to put in here. <laughs> So we'll just do a little bit more. Okay, so let's talk. Let's talk about whatever. I don't know. Um, let's talk about being. Oh, so, okay, as a reader, I feel like it's. Now, this is 100% my opinion, you guys. Okay? Just like everything I put on my channel. On my channel and on my page. It's all my opinion. Um, but I think that it's come up for me in different conversations and just in different scenarios that the importance of knowing when you are a hundred percent to do a reading is so important um so i was having this question not this question i had this dialogue with another reader and i was asking her if she felt that i should mention it or i should talk about it in a video just because i wanted to like see what her opinion would be and and whatnot so she was like I think you should you know mention it in the video and stuff so that's gonna be this video since I'm gardening <laughs> I'm gardening and you know trying to distract myself from possible bug appearances um so I I feel like when I'm doing a tarot reading or if I'm doing any kind of a reading for a, a client especially if it's a paying client I feel like it's really important to be um, almost 100% or 100% um, in that right mindset, in the right energy, um, to not be sick, to not be emotional, to not be going through crazy turmoil, um, unless you feel like you can handle it. Um, some people can handle it, some people can't. Some people do better under stress, some people don't. We're all different. Um, but I'm coming at this from my, my own personal perspective. And I know for me personally, um, if I'm going through a really emotional time, if I'm sick, um, like if I'm not feeling well or I'm really ill or whatever, I can't do readings. Um, I choose not to do readings. I probably could do a reading, um, but I choose not to. Um, I choose not to um, to do that for for multiple reasons. 
One, because when I do a reading for a client, I need to make sure that I am in a positive headspace, that I am in the most positive headspace that I can possibly be in. Oh my God, I don't even know how to do this. Um, because I wanna make sure that I'm giving that client their, the, the, their money's worth. Like, they give me money to entrust that I'm gonna provide a service to them that I pretty much have a reputation for, right? Um, people come to me because other people have told them about my readings, they find me on YouTube, or they find me on Instagram. And I set a very high um, standard for myself because I worked hard for it. And I want to make sure that my clients are getting what they, what they pay for, you know, what they expect. And the, the, the things that I'm providing needs to live up to that. How, do you, how the fuck do you get this out? <laughs> um, so I need to make sure that I'm, I'm doing that. And if I'm not doing that, how am I being an ethical reader? So I just think that it's important that we put ourselves in check, um, that we, oh my God, I don't even know what to do. I think it's important that we put ourselves in check. I think it's important that we, we make sure that if we're not 100% um, emotionally, spiritually, I mean, physically, it's, it's, it just depends. Some people can do readings when they're physically, you know, in bedridden or whatever. <laughs> that's, diff that's a different thing. But I'm talking about more of the emotional and the spiritual because I feel like we have the tendency to put our, or we try not to, but we can have the tendency to put our um, emotions and our issues and, and our stuff on other people when we're doing a reading. Basically because it's... Um, Oh my god. You guys, how the fuck do I do this? My gardeners who are watching this are probably like, oh my god, she's gonna kill her plant. Okay, maybe if I just like get some of this dirt in here, then it'll be easier to pull you out. Oh my god, I don't wanna see a bug. <laughs> my husband would probably laugh. I told him I was gonna do this and he was just like, you're not, and I go, yeah, I am. I need to, because I don't want my baby one to die. I don't want my baby aloe vera to die. Okay, I can see it better now. So, um, I feel like, you know, if you know you can handle it, and then you're, you obviously, you, you do it at your own discretion. Everybody, everybody is different, but, I always have to be make sure I have to make sure I'm close to or, or I am 100%, especially emotionally, because I am a um, I am an empath, so I do feel emotions. Um, I suck up people's emotions, and if I'm in a bad space, I can be the moodiest person ever. I can be the most negative person ever, Starla, and. Um, and I feel like that's just bad. <laughs> I feel like I feel like I can't I can't bring that kind of um, that kind of energy to my readings. I feel like it's a negative, um, and I'm doing a disservice to my clients who pay for a specific kind of a reading from me. And if I'm not providing that, um, it's not fair for them. And, and if the reason why I'm not providing that service to them is because I'm sick while I'm doing their reading or I'm emotionally distracted because I went through a fight with my husband prior to doing the reading, that's not my client's fault. That's my fault and that's my responsibility. So um, I feel like it's important that as a reader, 
um, I have to put myself in check prior to doing these readings for you guys. Um, because, I, I'll, I mean, I will be the first person to admit, I'm not always 100%, you know? Definitely not 100% all the time. Um, I have my moments. Oh, I think I almost got you. So, I have my moments, and... Um, I feel like a lot of people can relate to that. <laughs> we all have bad days. We're not perfect. And there's, a, there's nothing wrong with that. There is nothing wrong with not being perfect. There's nothing wrong with that. There's not, nothing wrong with admitting, I'm having a bad day. I need a break. I can't do your reading. I have to set it back a day or two or even a week. Um, when my brother passed away, I was fishing out. I was forking out readings. And I got to the point where I was feeling like I was doing a disservice to some of my clients um, because I would break down crying after my sessions were done. And it was just like, I was like on this emotional roller coaster and I didn't know how to deal. Um, so I feel like I was doing this huge disservice to my clients and um, I can't get them out. Like, I guess I just have to keep digging through the sides until he comes loose. This soil is so packed in there. My husband did it. Oh. Watch it, like, crack the pot, and then I can't do anything with it. Oh, my God, I'm making a mess now. I thought I was going to be neat with this. I thought this was going to be a lot easier than what this is. This is hard. yeah you guys I just wanted to talk about that because that's been on my mind um and also the other point I wanted to make I wow you could totally see all those little roots poor baby you had nowhere to go oh okay okay Woo! I need to like blow my nose oh. as you can see I don't know how to garden Oh my God. <laughs> Whew. Um, so, okay. So the other point I wanted to make was that I, I buy readings from people. Okay. I'm one of those readers that I don't, um, I, I can invest in other readers, um, because I, I don't like to read for myself 100% of the time. Sometimes, yes, I will because it's a personal reading or I'm having like a journaling moment. But other times, I crave someone else to just read for me. Just like I crave someone to cook for me sometimes. <laughs> Yay! Ugh. Oh my God. I fucking did it. That was hard. That was... That was a lot of work. It was all the roots. Okay. Hopefully. Um, so I like to invest in someone else to read for me. I feel like it's, um, it's beneficial. I feel like it helps me, um, you know, gain clarity through someone else putting in the work for me. Um, and so I will purchase readings from other readers. Now, because I like to do that, I feel like if, if I'm doing a service to other people and I'm making sure that I am in my most 100% headspace, oops, I totally like broke you, sorry, sorry. <laughs> um, I expect that same kind of, um, energy to be placed onto me, right? For my readings. At least I would like to hope that that's what would happen. Um, that I would hope that 
the integrity would be there that the, the people that I'm purchasing a reading from, which is probably why I'm really picky about who reads for me. Um, because I, I do pay attention to people's ethics. Um, I do pay attention to what kind of services they're offering. How are they doing their readings? What quality is it? You know, what kind of a reader are they? What, what types of um, interests do they have outside of their readings? Like all of that kind of stuff is important to me because I feel like, oh my God, I don't even know what the fuck I'm doing. Um, because I feel like I, ha I have the same people with the same, they're, they're looking at me the same way, you know? People have me under the microscope. What is Rose into? What are Rose's interests outside of her readings? Is she an ethical person? Can I, do, just, do I align with her belief systems? Do I align with her videos um, that are not tarot related? How is she as a person? Would I be friends with her outside of the tarot community? Like, I feel like there's a lot of people that have me on a, under a microscope. And I, and I feel like it's rightly so because I do the same thing to other people. <laughs> so, um, you know, it's not something that I'm, I'm not I'm upset about that. Like, I think it's, we all need to do that. But I also think that if I'm going to be making sure I'm 100% for my readings, for my paid clients, I would hope that other people are doing the same for me and for their clients. Because to me, it just makes, I, I just think it makes sense. I just think it's the right thing to do. Um, I guess what I'm saying is, is I would hate to invest money into a reading and have that person, and I may not even know it, you know, um, because I don't know what's going on behind their closed door, but I would hate to invest money and energy into a person and have them half-ass my reading or have them do my reading when they're also having a conversation with their friend on the phone. You know what I mean? Like, I wouldn't, I would hate that because I wouldn't feel like my time and energy is being completely devoted and dedicated at that moment in time, you know? <laughs> I would just feel like, like I'm not being taken seriously. And I wouldn't, I would hate that. I would hate that. That would bother me so much. So I think that that's where this whole video is coming from because I do feel strongly about, about that subject. I do feel like, um, <laughs> I do feel like there needs to be, it's, it's, it's kind of like, what's, what do they call it? Like an unwritten rule of that kind of stuff, you know? Like, make sure you're in a good headspace when you're doing a reading. If you are taking, and even especially, especially if you are doing paid readings, if you have people who are paying you money for your energy exchange, for your time, for your readings, you need to make sure you're 100% devoted to their, their, their session. If you're doing, whether it's like a 10 minute reading or it's an hour reading, you need to be devoted. Um, that's money. People work hard for money. We, people work their asses off for their paychecks. And some people have very big issues and questions that they, they have, they ask us sometimes, you know? I mean, sometimes you're doing a reading and it's just something simple like my little pet readings, but that could also be a dire thing for somebody, you know? But some people really pour out their heart and soul into their questions and you can tell when you're reading that email, you're like, oh my gosh, this person is hurting right now. This is a soul that's hurting. Um, and they paid you their hard-earned money, and you don't know. You don't know if they had to push a, push their grocery list aside or... <laughs> I mean, I don't think someone would do that, but you know what I mean. Like, maybe they had to oh, um, compensate, like, make room somewhere else so that they can buy that specific service from you. And, um, you know, because I've had, I've had clients... I think these babies are... I've had clients tell me I saved up for, for this for this reading. I can't wait. I'm excited. I, I literally have had clients tell me that 
where um, they have a budget, like they have a strict budget because they have bills or, you know, like everyday things, it's part of life. And they save up to have a session with me, you know? And, and I love that because one, it shows they could go to any other reader. We can all do that. You, if you don't have the money to afford someone's service, you can go to someone else who may be offering a reading <clears throat> at half the price, but you'll have clients, when you do readings long enough, you will have clients who are invested in you because they love your services. They love your energy. They trust you. They open their hearts to you, you know? I always see it as like, any time that I have a new client, a brand new client, it's like that first visit to the doctor or that first visit to your therapist, a brand new therapist, right? And you gotta open up your heart and soul all over again to this person, this complete stranger. And um, trusting that they're gonna be full of uh, integrity. And I, I take that seriously with my clients. Um, my, my reoccurring clients, the ones that tell me I saved up for a couple months so I could purchase your layers of you reading. I treasure that because to me it's like this client really wanted that reading with me. I better not be doing it half ass. I better not be on the phone chatting with my friends while I'm pulling cards. I better not be sick out of my mind and unable to focus, but yet I'm doing it because I have to get it done. Like, no, your clients that come to you, if you're not feeling well and they treasure your work, they will not get upset when you tell them, listen, something is going on in my life, something unexpected, I don't feel well, oh, fuck. I don't feel well, I don't feel 100%, I need to, um, your, I need to delay your reading because I just, I don't feel up to doing it this weekend. I've had to do that. I've had to say that to some clients. I was delayed readings before. I've delayed them to up to a week, almost two weeks when I, when my brother died because I just could not, I couldn't do it. I had no energy to do, to hold space for people. I even closed shop, which is another thing. Um, another point I'm going to make. Let me, let me clean up this mess real fast. Um, it's another point I'm gonna make is that um, I've had to close my, my, my tarot store. So I, at the time I had Store Envy um, and Store Envy has this beautiful option where you could, um, you could close shop, right? If you're not, if you're not up to selling, you don't want to sell anything, maybe you're going on vacation or whatever, you could close shop. So I used to do that. I would close my store for a week. One time I closed it for a month because I was on vacation or I would give myself like some time off, you know, because it's your job. Like every once in a while you need a day off. And, um, and so I would do that. And I feel like, sometimes I would feel like, oh, I'm letting my clients down. But no, I'm actually doing them a favor by making myself unavailable because I know I am emotionally not fit to do it, to do the work. So, yes. <laughs> so I just wanted to, you know, explain that and come on here and explain that to you guys um, because that's been on my mind. It's been on my mind. And I'm not putting anyone down, nothing like that. It's just been on my mind. It's something that came up. Um, it's something that I'm passionate about because I have had a new wave of clients, like new ones. So last year I had a lot of reoccurring clients that I had for two years or so, right? And then I noticed they stopped purchasing readings. It's kind of like they, Maybe they just no longer needed my services anymore. They moved on. Maybe they found another reader, whatever, like stuff happens. I'm not like mad. <laughs> it's just, I was no longer the reader for them, 
let's put it that way. And, um, and then since I've been doing my channel, I have been receiving some new clients and I have a whole new wave of new fresh clients and um, I'm so blessed with that. Like, I love connecting with new people. I feel like a new client is a new challenge because when you read for the same people over and over again, you get to know them, like really get to know them. And so I'm invested in some of my clients' lives. Like, I'm always like, oh, did you get blah, 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 blah? Did so-and-so blah, 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 blah? You know what I mean? And, and then that's fun, like I like that. I like to have that relationship with my clients, but I also like the challenge of a new one. And um, so you'll see that too, like your clients will outgrow you and they'll move on and then they'll come back. Sometimes like a, two years later, you, you'll get like a, a reading request from one of them and you're like, oh my gosh, I haven't heard from you in so long, what's going on? So it just, it just, it is, it is, it is what it is. But you're gonna start getting, you guys, you, you like talking to you, my viewers, you're gonna start basing strong relationships with your clients and you're gonna notice that their, they, their feelings, their, their questions are so important to them, you know? To you, it's just a question. To you, it's just a question you're playing cards for. But to your client, it's everything. And you're gonna see that money exchange, even if it's $5, you guys. $5, $100. You should treat it all the same. So if you're not feeling good, you're going through a rough patch at home, and you're just not emotionally stable to do a reading, in my opinion, hold off on it. It's You're doing a disservice to your clients. And I would hope, <laughs> I would hope, and I really don't have doubts because the people that I do choose to read for me, like I said, I'm very picky. I know that they're their ethics are good um, plus I could sense it from people <laughs> but um, I would hope that if I'm investing my time energy and money on you and trusting in you to fulfill a reading for me that you would be 100% when you're doing it and giving me my time that session you're 100% so that's what I'm gonna say about that I'm gonna put a crystal in this thing <laughs> that's like a new a new thing, one of, one of, someone in the tarot community mentioned it, that they put their broken crystals in their pots. And I was like, oh my God, that's so smart. So I have some chipped crystals and I wanna put um, a crystal in here. So gonna do that. But I'm gonna end my video, you guys, because I have to transplant that baby one, which will be really easy because he's small. Uh, but I just wanted to get on here and talk while I did this because I had a little bit of anxiety with the animals and I only saw one bug, but Nothing else, so thank God. Hopefully I can carry this outside. <laughs> um, but anyways, I will talk to you guys later. Thank you for tuning in. And if you have opinions, comments, questions about what I talked about in this video, I totally, totally challenge you to comment and leave your, leave your insight and thoughts because I'd like to hear it. And um, until then, talk to you guys later. Love you. Bye, guys.